Hey guys, welcome to session number 34 of the Trailer Music Composers Podcast. <clears throat> one man with one microphone who still cries at the scene in Mrs. Delphi when they're in the court. Welcome to the Trailer Music Composers Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to another session of the Trailer Music Composers podcast. In this episode, I am sat at my computer because I wanted to cover something that actually a lot of other composers picked me up on, um, uh, and not in a critical way at all, uh, in uh, a highly complimentary way, which I'm always honoured to receive from other talented people. And that is, how do I create such simple but effective trailer intros? Intros are... By far my favourite thing to do, um, and when I say intros, I mean the act one, the setting of the scene. And I think, honestly, it's because of a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is, you know the, how much I focus on imagining it as a landscape and and giving a sense of depth. And I don't just mean like depth in pitch, but I mean depth in distance. Uh, and obviously, you guys should also know how much I love reverb. Uh, so I've, uh, you can't see it, which is really nice, actually. I'm really, it's really nice to know that you can't see what I'm doing because it actually will hopefully focus your ears on the intricacies of what I'm doing. Uh, I have, I'm just, I, I have absolutely no idea what I, I, I've gone against everything I normally teach, which is having a picture in my head uh, uh, and at least having some template loaded up. Well, I do have a template. I have my blank logic page, <laughs> page template loaded up. I've got Alicia's keys, which is pretty much all I ever need. Um, so here's the plan. I'm just going to do a first act. Uh, and I want to do this as simply and as minimal as possible. And I'd like it to be more sound design than traditional uh, because it's a lot of fun and you guys can start to listen to see what I'm doing. Now, my bag is usually thrillers and horrors. Uh, with sort of the darker side of action as well when it comes to sound design. Uh, so I'm going to write a, a brief little um, introduction, first act, for a dark thriller. Now, the way I would do this is I like to set the tone with either a pad or something very boomy and distant. So I'm going to make my own pad here. I've got a, I've got Alicia's keys, and I'm just going to stick with that for now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load up something. And I'm going to be playing that in, okay? And I'm just going to play that in a little bit and then export it and have a little play. I'll do the job nicely. Let's um, bounce in place. Piano pad, I will call it. So uh, this is often how I roll when it comes to... This is how I roll, guys. I mean, honestly. This is how I roll when it comes to uh, sound design. I will bounce in place uh, an idea. So what I've got now is I've got the waveform in front of me and I'm just cleaning up a touch so that I can then... Um, create a longer waveform from it. So now I'm just copying it with a crossfade between the two. So this should, should, should sound. There we go. There we, that was me going over a crossfaded element and you'd, I didn't even notice, which is perfecto. And I've just done that four times and I'm just going to give the last one a fade out and probably give the intro one a fade in. So here's the fade in. Cool. So there's my basic pad, which I'm now, it's roughly 54 seconds long, which is more than enough. Uh, I'll call it piano pad. Bip. Bounce in place. There it is. Uh, there's the master at work. <laughs> no, there's the master file. I'm just going to mute that 
track there, and I've got this. So what I'm going to do is, first thing, uh, you know it, let's reverse it. Okay, because nothing does eerie like a reversed piano, or like a reverse track. Okay, cool. Uh, this is nice, but it's too close. I want to I want to set this in like as as a, as if I'm in uh, the caves of oh oh no I'm going to kick myself for not remembering a Lord of the Rings fact here uh, the, the the dwarven caves from Lord of the Rings. Uh, so I'm going to chuck in uh, a recent uh, freebie, which was uh, Valhalla's supermassive reverb, which is just immense. Uh, it's my type of ridiculous reverb. So I'm going to go into Massive, and we're going to load up. Let's try Final Frontier, shall we? That's the setting. That's done everything I wanted it to do and more. So let's. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fade in that track. I was going to put this into um, a a sampler and have a little play. Still could. You know what? That just sounds beautiful. I am going to bounce that in place. Uh, piano affected. Had. I'm going to bounce that in place, load it into a sampler. I know I've got, uh, the one, the wonderful thing about it is I've got a tonality going on. It's C minor. So that's the lovely thing when you do put something, so convert to new sampler track. Yes, please. Uh, let's put it to C1. Uh, there we go. Piano affected pad, create one shot zones. Yeah, let's try. It's good. Here we go. Let's see what we've got. So that is me just pressing the key on the keyboard, by the way. And that's a ridiculous long <laughs> release, isn't it? There we go, let's take that down a touch. Hmm. So let's try if I play play that same thing up. Hold on. <laughs> I haven't gone into uh, EXS yet, have I? Come on. Um, so at the moment it's just on C1. So if I stretch that up to C5, let's try that higher up. Classic. So obviously what I've got, I've got a tonality going on here. So when I... When I, I've got a sample of a minor third. So when I do play a C minor chord on the keyboard, it's actually given me some complicated diminished chord. Uh, so what I want is to think about this. So if I'm in, I can afford to play a C, uh, the note C, because that gives me C and E flat. I can also afford to play a G, because that would give, then give me G and B flat. So if I played if I played C and G together, that would give me a C minor seven chord. The thing I like about a C minor seven chord is it's sad but optimistic. There's hope to it, but it's not dark enough, is it? So actually, I, I'm gonna, I'm just, all my hard work. I'm just deleting that 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 effective pad, and I'm just gonna use the original sample because I want it to have that minor feel to it. Let's turn it down a bit. So what we've got, we've got this lovely bed of noise going on. Uh, it, it's hinting at the minor, so we're feeling like it's dark and sad and tense and stuff like that. So, I mean, my next go-to thing is, so remember, this has created a sense of hugeness, which 
is exactly what I want. I also want to have a sense of impact. And for this, my go-to uh, impact sub is in damage damage one, because obviously damage two just came out, which I haven't yet bought. Um, I probably will eventually, but uh, here we go. Uh, damage punch kit. There we go. Oh, that's the business. Just love that. Here we go. Let's play that in. Immense. And then let's just quantize that. And I'm going to have that coming in. Oh, no. Sorry, what it's done is it's gone to a plastic kit. There we go. Uh, I'm going to have that playing every eight bars, perhaps. How long is that? That's 16 seconds. Yeah. Okay, cool. And another little trick that I do like to do, although some might say this is a cheesy one, I, I like to have an echo on this type of hit. Uh, and, and then you color the echoes. Let's see if we can hear this. I want it on the quarter notes. Let's put the feedback up. It's just it's just a, a nod to the size again. It doesn't it's only a subtle thing. Let's turn the feet. Let's try a half note. Yeah, that's better. Half note works. Okay, so we now have the two elements that I really wanted. I have created the sense of space, the final frontier. These are the voyages. I would now like to think about uh, the important word dynamics here. And I don't mean necessarily dynamics like compression. I mean dynamics like uh, in the sonic space, in the space around you. Now, the way, you're, the way our ears perceive sounds is obviously things that happen are really far away. Uh, the lower frequencies travel to us much more easily than the higher frequencies. That's why when you hear when you hear something big and boomy in the distance it's 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 extra specially low. The frequencies that that are available to our ears, it's gonna be the low ones. Because the, the short ones will sort of die off on their way here. Hence this stuff creating a sense of distance. I mean I can what I've just done is I've just taken a almost like a high cut down to about sort of 1500 hertz to take the edge off that top of the of the pad because then what you can do there I will I will use it as as a um, extra bit to bring in the build into the the finale as it were one two three four one two three four there we go okay so i'm going to have an extra long in introduction at 54 seconds i mean Vic elephant music would be going no it's too long no. yes sir I, will, I shall stop that um but in, for now for this purpose i want to create the sense of epicness epicness Okay, so let's uh, oh, let me let's uh, add in an extra part to this. Okay, I'm going to take a. I want to add like a little whoom, into my sub hits, uh, a little swish hit, as it were. So let's just load up an epic drum. Let's just load up uh, damage Armageddon. I'm just gonna play this in. Here we go. Two, three, four. Play. Yay. Um, and I'm gonna quantize that and I'm going to export it and reverse it. Um, I say export it, bounce in place. Now I've got my file here and I'm going to reverse it. There we go. So let's just 
delete that. And now I'm going to put this so it leads into that sub because I want to kind of give the sense of build even into elements like a sub. So let's have a listen to it. Classic. Okay. However, I don't necessarily want that that real like whoop, really high. I don't again. I don't want all that high detail. So I'm going to put a, some kind of high pass on it. I mean low pass. Cool. That sounds cool. Cool, 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 cool. cool. Let's uh, chop it even more. Down to about two hundred, three hundred. 400. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so this is the stuff I do all the time. Um, not laugh like a madman. Um, I simply think about the minimal elements I have and how I can make them more interesting. Uh, so what we have is this wonderful, wonderful sound. This great pad that was just me playing Alicia's Keys. And now we're getting an extra sense here. Okay, so shall I stick shall I stick with the, I'll stick with Alicia's keys. Um, let's go right to that. Okay, so I want to bring in an extra element here for this sub hit. I mean, that's really cheesy. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, what we'll do is we'll smush, squash, amplify, minify, uh, you know, all those important words to make that sound cooler. So I'm going to bounce that in place. Uh, there we go. So I've got my audio file to work with, which sounds like this. There we go. Okay, so let's just normalize it. There we go. And I could reverse it, but I don't want to. The first thing I want to do is smash this to death. I'm going to call this low C. Um, so uh, as those of you who listen to the podcast will know, most people, when I say, go to plugins, guys, the amount of people, in fact, everyone I've interviewed pretty much says, sound toys, because <laughs> they're awesome. So let's let's use sound toys. Everybody loves sound toys. Um, so I like a combination of decapitator. Well, I say a combination. I just like Decapitator, really, if I'm completely honest with you. Uh, so we're going to go to effects, uh, and we're going to add Angry Neighbor. So this is like a... I mean, who doesn't want that? I mean, that is ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes! Okay, so what that does is, is it smushes it to death and then chops off the high information, which is exactly what I want. Okay, now a classic thing to do here is I'm taking the end of the file off. So we've just got this. I mean, that's pretty, pretty bloody cool, right? And then I'm just going to add this so every four bars we hear that noise. I'm going to turn it down just a touch. <laughs> okay, fantastic. I mean, that's just wicked. So what I'm going to do now is I'm, just, I'm actually going to bounce that little section in place and I'm going to add a little whoosh in it. Uh, low C, whoosh. Um, so that it kind of goes like that. So here we go. Let's just chop the ending. And so this is what I, I've just bounced that noise. Uh, I'm going to reverse it. Junction. Reverse. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to add in a a little fade with a curve, so it's really like. Okay, now the other thing I want to do is just go through to the EQ, because obviously we've removed a lot of the cool information here, the the higher up information, as you can see here when I. There's not much going on there, so I'm going to 
get the uh, compressor out and smoosh that. There we go. A threshold of minus 45. Ratio of 12. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna add that in for the first one. So the first one will just be your plain old here we go. Business as usual. Then this one. Okay, now another little trick I do like to do is I'm going to pan this uh, throughout its lifetime. Uh, and that means that I'm going to be taking this from your left ear to your right ear through its... Or is it, is it too loud? Let's do it again. Cool. Just a simple little tip bit. Now here's the other thing, right? So at the moment we have that happen. And what I could do is have that every two bars. Because then what you're doing is you're playing with a sense of space and a spent a sense of pace, space and pace. So we've got our space, which is that low rumble and this lovely piano pad. And then we have our sense of uh, bringing things forward with this whoosh. So it's starting to feel like it's ticking along, which is really important. I'm copying and pasting everything so that it's uh, going to carry on. But what I want to have is I want to have something that's going to give me a sense of uh, tension increase. I mean, honestly, I am really resisting just chucking in a ton of risers because I love risers. But I want to give you some guys something different here. So let's load up. Um, Gonna keep damage armor getting, so we we'll use that again in a minute. I don't, I don't want. Remember, I don't want a lot of stuff going on, so I might load up one of my own samples, um, and play with it a little bit. Uh, so where are we? Church piano. I think it's this one. So I like having things ticking along. It makes you feel like something's coming and also things are going so it gives the track drive and it's incredibly simple to do. You can just do it on the beat. Okay so let's let's bring this in uh, halfway about here. I mean, that's quite, the sound isn't quite right yet. It's going to need to be, I mean, if we're honest with you, probably smushed, but let's take out some of this low information. Yeah, I'll take out some of the low information because I want this to feel closer, uh, you know, closer to me. Uh, so I'm going to take out uh, Native Instruments Supercharger GT for smushing. Okay, cool. So what you're getting now is... Can you hear the room swelling? I mean, it's just fantastic, isn't it? So what happens if I actually then take some of the high information out? Awesome. So here we, here's what I'm going to do now. Rather than having a riser, 
I'm going to use an automated EQ. Okay. I'm going to take this automated EQ so that actually this starts at the same time as our lovely low C. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to automate the EQ so that what happens is it kind of opens up progressively. So taking a very, very simple idea and giving it a progression. So let's turn on latch and let's go. It's like someone's walking up the stairs. Opening up the filter. Classic dance move. And then let's turn the read on and then I'm going to just give it a, a volume cut right there, right as it stops. So I'm going to also do the same for this piano pad. So you notice I, I remember I put a little filter on it at the top. So let's put it onto latch. Let's open that up. It's going to be subtle. But it all makes a difference. Okay, there we go. And then let's put it on to... So if we now listen to the track, we can then get a sense of what this track needs. So remember I wanted to create a sense of pace. Uh, not pace, a sense of space and scale and a sense of the ominous. Remember, this is a dark thriller. Nothing huge is happening. I don't want anything huge. Keep it simple. Here we go. Okay, awesome. So simple, and yet it's so effective. Admittedly, my little tap to piano note kind of sounds like a uh, a four to the floor kick, doesn't it? Let's just, I'm just sending it up an octave. See, I like this. Maybe I'll put an echo on this as well. Fantastic. So this essentially now just needs a little bit more to help it into that section, that, that drop. So I'm actually going to add a couple of hits. Maybe not that aggressive, just, just a little one, just to be like, hey guys, this is swimming business, you know. Didn't hear that one. There we go. And then I'm going to put that into a space just using Reverb's default logic because I want to send it somewhere. Send it somewhere. Um, it halls. Let's put it in a church balcony, shall we? Yes. Okay. 
again, I'm keeping the sense of space. I don't want the, the close things to happen yet. And if I did, which well, actually, let's scrap that last bit. Yes, if I did. Uh, anyway, and what I'm going to do is this, is this track is at its turning point. Because I didn't really picture the whole cue beyond this, where I take it from now is entirely dependent on where I where the track needs to go. And that seems really obvious. However, what I'm trying to say is this could go into a orchestral cue right now. This could go into a hybrid cue. This could continue down the kind of like organic sound design route. Um, but I, I think I'd like to try something a little bit different. I'm I'm very tempted to sort of do a almost like a dancey little thing going on. But I I kind of want it to get a little bit like. Not weird, but unusual, I shall say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, load up a simple drum machine. So for us Logic users, that would be Ultra Beat. Ooh, there we go. No, I want to load up uh, drum banks, acoustic, no... Analog snare bank. There we go. Okay, right. So let's just have a listen to this. I don't want to do this. I was thinking of maybe going sort of like tense, sort of uh, 24 music uh, by just playing random notes and then filtering it. But you know what? That's just lazy. Delete. Um, I'm going to load up some of my risers, which is, uh, I can hear you say, oh, that's la that's lazy too. But uh, ski you guys. I want to hear decent risers. Um, where am I? I know I'm at home. Schreiber samples. My string risers. Yes. The beauty of this sample is it's tons of information. Recorded at 96. And they're going super slow. So it doesn't feel like a traditional riser. Let's add it in. It fits in with that low C sound. Let's, uh, I'm just going to bounce that in place just so that I can hear it in situ midway through the notes and then I'm going to cut it off at the end so then I can drop it in any time and then we can hear it cut off. I'm tempted not to hear that. And then, oh, I need to add a volume drop on that piano. <laughs> yes. Okay, so actually when you think about it, guys, I only really have three elements going on. I've got that pad, I've got that distorted warm thing, and I've got that sound. Uh, so there's a couple of ways I can... I've got the riser, which oh, so I feel relieved and relaxed. I've got a riser in there finally. What does it need now? So I could layer up some sticks with this church piano tapped. I could layer up more risers with these risers. I could create a signature sound. I mean, I kind of got it there. But it's not quite doing it yet, is it? Um, 
so perhaps what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little snippet from my previous piano pad sample. Let's have a look. Yep, I'm going to take that, bounce that in place. Hmm. Bounce in place, I'll call it snippet. Delete that, and then I'm going to move that. Oh, now let's have a little play. So I want this to become my signature sound. I admit I've taken it from a sample of a piano. So I'm going to reverse it. First step. Cool. I'm also going to, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, move it down an octave, I think, just time and pitch. Uh, so it's original, let's go minus 1200%, or cent, I should say, process and paste. <laughs> yes, yes, that's the business. Fade it in a bit, fade it out a bit now. So those of you, this is kind of what Simon was talking about in his uh, interview, uh, how he just like completely plays with everything and smushes it and until it, he starts to get interesting sound. So let's do the same thing here. Uh, I'm going to, again, I'm going to take sound toys. Uh, let's, uh, let's try, uh, uh, what are you called? Not Christopher. 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 Uh, filter Freak. Let's take Filter Freak 1, shall we? Let's have a little play. Uh, let's move it on to uh, Freak Q a little fatter. No. Yes. Yes. That's the business. Now I'm going to add in an extra smushing thing. So I like the sound of it, but it's not doing all the things I want. I want it to feel like crazy. Let's uh, chuck in a little distortion, shall we? I could smush it with some more sound toys, but I feel like otherwise you guys are going to start to think I'm selling sound toys. Uh, Mercurial TSC. I think this is a free. Yes, it is. Drive. Let's turn the drive all the way up. Tone all the way up. Yes, yes. That's right. Okay, now let's add in a couple more things. I, I'm going to uh, compress this a lot. Threshold all the way down. Ratio all the way down. Yes, I love that. Now let's give it a faster attack. Or maybe a slower attack. Yes. A softer knee. There we go. Distortion on, threshold limiter on. Um, cool. Now let's put it into a space and do some more smashing. So I'm getting, get, basically trying to take it away from the original sound of the piano. Uh, so let's put it into a space, shall we? Uh, let's just go into uh, Space Designer. I want something not so much like a big space. Let's go into... Uh, Warped effects, uh, not warped effects, sorry. Um, medium spaces, warped spaces, that's what I want. This one's called Jasmine. Yes. Now, this is where the fun starts to get. Audio units, Apple audio pitch. Let's send this back up an octave. See if it sounds... Two octaves. Gosh, that sounds so like uh, weird. <laughs> Let's swap it with the space designer, see what happens. So I just put the pitch there at the start of the chain. This is a wonderful thing about this type of stuff. Actually, you're doing it and you're like, yes, this is awesome, this is awesome. Oh, actually. This sucks. So let's throw in a decapitator because you seem to save the day so much, so many times for me. Um, let's put it into. Uh, I'm not going to angry that blown speaker. Okay, cool. 
Okay. Yeah, because when you take out the pitched up, it doesn't have any tonal information, which is, isn't bad. Uh, let's take out the space. Oh, you know what? Without the space designer, it's actually pretty good. Um, so we've got this. Here it is. And we're going to bring this in every bar. Okay, and I'm just going to add in one last thing, I think. Uh, I'm tempted to add in um, another higher riser. But I want to add these guys in. Uh, I'm going to take the space out. I want it to be dry. There we go. Love it. Here we go. Okay, cool. Now, it, it kind of starts to do the job, but what it's saying to me is, Richard, give us some bigger drums. Which I think is totally right. I think we need Cerberus. Where are you, Cerberus? Cerberus has got these... Uh, it was uh, Kieran Birch put these onto me. Put these onto, he didn't put them onto me. He recommended these as kind of like nice, punchy... Um, Nice punchy drums, and I adore them. Uh, so many times I load up a Tom sample, and it's like, boo, 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 boo. And I'm, I just think, oh, man, come on. Can't just give me a... But like the sound of someone punching a punch bag. Okay, that's not a good example. Where are you? There it is. Habit. Here it is. I'm not going to bring them in so soon. And I think I'm going to do the classic double time thing just because I love it. There we go. And let's do. Glue, glue these together. Oh, but you double tap. Let's make it mono. Cool. Let's smash it. There we go, guys. Um, I'm happy with that. Uh, there's more I could do and probably would do, but it's teaching you the basics of what I do and how you can, too, take a very, very simple idea. I haven't gone crazy. I basically just loaded up a piano uh, and a few drum samples. So a piano, the Alicia's Keys, uh, Damage, uh, my own church piano tapped, uh, my own string riser, and Cerberus. You could have done the Cerberus thing with plenty of other drums. Nice. So 
this Cerberus thing gives it that kind of military feel now. I feel like I could kind of go and like, you know, that type of thing for Act 3. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, guys. I really, really appreciate you listening. And uh, and if you enjoyed this type of uh, podcast, it's interesting to say podcast, let me know um, because it's it's really, really good for me to be able to show you guys exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I'm tempted to upload this up to YouTube anyway, just so you can see exactly how I do it, because that will be quite fun. Um, and maybe I will. Who knows? Anyway, uh, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, please leave a review and a rating on iTunes. Or if you are if you are watching this, if I, if I did manage to upload it to YouTube, uh, please click like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. You guys are absolute legends. <laughs>